Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am finally doing my mascara ranking video. It's definitely taken a bit longer than I'd hoped to get this video here, but we are here now and I will be ranking these five mascaras for you. Things that I take into account are things like the price, the value for money, even things like the outer packaging I take into account, even if it's not as much of a big deal as say an eyeshadow palette. And also of course my own personal experience with the actual product and the wand, which does contribute significantly to the overall ranking. So I'm going to review them in alphabetical order and then I'm going to go through the end and just tell you like my ranking of them and why. So the first mascara we're looking at is the Dior Dior Show mascara. Now I do only have a small size of this but I have had a couple of these little ones to use over the last few months so I'm very much well versed in how this performs. This is the only one that I haven't owned a full size of out of the five that I'm reviewing so just keep in mind that, that might slightly change the results but this one does though have a full size brush so you're at least getting that experience with it. It's just the formula sometimes tends to be a touch on the drier side when it's a small size. They're very much claim it to be something that is very buildable they sort of talk about it being like used on runways and such to give like either a natural look or a volumized look so it's very much meant to be quite a customizable mascara i definitely would agree with that i think you can get quite a natural look with it but you can build it up it does tend to maintain fluffiness as you build it as well and it's one that i would describe as having more of a drier formula. There's only one mascara in here that I'd claim has a wet formula. I definitely have more of a preference to drier formulas. They work better for my lashes, but I know some people who need the wet sort of formula to make the mascara look best on them. So this one is definitely more of a drier formula. And as a result, it does have that very sort of fluffy look to the lashes. It's a natural bristle brush. It is quite a thick, dense brush. There's a lot of bristles. This is actually the largest brush out of the five. And I do find it maybe a little bit too big. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to get the very inner corner lashes. I think out of the five, this is the least volumizing though. It's quite hard to get like a super false lash kind of dramatic effect. It's actually what I'm wearing my lashes today. Day. and while I think they look really lovely it's definitely a little bit more of a natural look so this is one that I do enjoy for like natural volume day to day but I wouldn't really reach for this for like an event or going out or playing at a concert or something this small size that I have is not actually available to purchase this is like a free gift with purchase that you get through like Sephora so you can only purchase one size and the full size contains 10 mils which is a lot of product however the retail price of this definitely does play a factor in terms of its value for money in the US this retails for $29.50 but in Australia it retails for 56 AUD which even with the exchange rate is still a lot a lot more expensive here even though there was such a huge difference in the price between the two countries it's still ranked fourth place for both US dollars and Australian dollars in terms of value for money so it's still not the most expensive one that I'm going to talk about today in terms of value for money but I thought it was interesting that there were such disparities between the two countries Quite often that does happen in luxury brands like Dior, Chanel, we pay a real premium for it here in Australia. Some of the more just high-end brands that are stocked at Mecca have a much better exchange rate sort of comparison. In terms of the packaging of the full size, it looks really nice, it looks like a standard packaging, but it doesn't it isn't really anything exciting so I ranked it as number four for packaging. Next one I want to talk about is the Hourglass Caution Mascara and this is in the color Ultra Black. They've got huge huge claims on this. They claim that it builds 400% more volume in one stroke. While I cannot attest to an actual like scientific figure I would definitely agree that this is a very intense mascara like it builds volume fast you only need one coat and it's like whoosh this is a formula that i would describe as a lot more wet so this is a wet formula but it's very thick at the same time that's how it's able to build volume so quickly however in my personal experience i do find it to be quite clumpy it doesn't work quite as well on my lashes as some of the other mascaras that i'm going to talk about that's just a personal preference i've seen some people use this and absolutely love it i enjoy it but i just there are other ones i'm going to talk about soon that i think are better now the brush has quite a nice sort of taper to it. It is one of the smallest brushes out of the five that I'm reviewing. Therefore I find it a little bit easier to control and you can really get into those inner corner lashes with it. However, I do think that a slightly thinner formula would be more successful with this brush. Now this mascara actually comes in two sizes and surprisingly the smaller size is actually better value for money. And when I looked into that I decided that it's most likely because the smaller size is not this beautiful gold weighted packaging. It does get very dirty as you can see um, and fingerprinty and 
while it looks gorgeous for a short time it doesn't look that pretty after a while but i feel like with the full size you are paying a premium for the packaging because the smaller size is just a black plastic mascara tube you've got to weigh up for yourself whether you're prepared to pay more for a beautiful looking gold shiny tube or you're more happy with just getting value for money for the product inside the large size in the us is 29 dollars for the big size which is 9.4 mils and the small size is 5.38 mils and that retails for 14 dollars in australia it's 42 dollars for the large size for 9.4 mils and it's only 20 dollars for the 5.38 mils. So for packaging on this one, I did rank it fourth. And the reason I ranked it a little lower than perhaps I originally thought I would is because yes, while I'm attracted to the fact that it's gold and it's gorgeous looking and it's beautiful, it's a work of art with the shape and everything. The fact that it just kind of gets very dirty, fingerprinty, there's like mascara smudges all over on every side. It doesn't look as nice now. That's kind of why I put it slightly lower because while the packaging's gorgeous when you first get it, it requires a bit of maintenance, you could say. In terms of value for money, it ranks better in Australia than it does in the US. So in the US it ranked third place, but in Australia it ranked second. So that was something that I thought was very interesting when I was doing my calculations. And then we're moving on to the Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara. And again, this is in the shade 01, which is black. This claims to be a 24 hour wearing mascara with endless volume over a single stroke in a similar fashion to the Hourglass Mascara. Now I would definitely agree this one again builds volume like it says. If you've watched my channel for a while you'll know I've actually used and talked about and raved about this mascara for a long time. I do really enjoy it. It's definitely a little bit more on the dry side formula. I don't think it's as dry as like the Dior or a couple of the other ones I want to talk about but it's definitely nowhere near as wet as the Hourglass. It does actually still have a build formula I do find that you can still build it even after one coat however I do think you get a really decent amount of volume on one coat as well so you might find that you don't need to build it but if you want to build this to like super spidery intense lashes then you can this is one of the only mascaras out of the five that I think really does give a sort of false lash effect the Lancome brush is a standard bristle brush as well. It's actually quite sparsely packed, which I think is how you're able to get a bit more volume. I really like the size of this one. It's not too big, but it's not too small, and it's generally pretty easy to control. In terms of packaging, I did rank this one fifth because I just don't think it's very inventive, and it is Lancome. You know, it's like a little bit more premium brand, and it's just a black plastic tube with the writing on the front. You do get that lovely Lancome rose on the top, which is sort of embossed, but maybe a little bit more of like a metal element to it similar to the hourglass which gives it a really nice weighted feel this does feel very lightweight and like drugstore packaging basically value for money this one does rank pretty well it's a similar kind of situation to hourglass where it came out at different rankings for Australia and America. However, this is one that I would recommend you buy the large size because it is better value to get the big size over the mini. And this one has 10 mils like the Dior, so it's a nice big amount of product and it retails for $25 in the US and $41 in Australia. And the mini size retails for $12 in the US and $25 in Australia, but you only get four mils. So it's definitely better value to get a large if you already know that you like the mascara. The minis, that do cost more than the full size I think have their place as either being like a travel size to actually you know take traveling or they give you a chance to try the product out before you splurge on the full size therefore in terms of ranking these for value for money that came in at second in the US and third in Australia for value for money so it's basically just swapped with hourglass between the two countries next on the list is the NARS climax mascara again another new release for this year this is in the shade explicit black so they like to use rather sexual names to label their products that might be something that some of you are not into or you might not care like me I don't really care we use the term climax in music all the time so it doesn't have to be sexual now NARS claims this to be quite a clump free mascara they definitely like mention that a few times in their descriptions online and I would agree with that I find this to be a very fluffy mascara that doesn't look too clumpy it is a very dry formula it's probably one of the most dry formulas out of the bunch and I find that I can build up a really nice amount of volume more volume than the Dior but I can also do a slightly more natural look with it a lot more natural than the hourglass or the long con this mascara is super customizable great if you want only one mascara that can do more daytime looks and dramatic evening looks I've used this for performances and stuff as well the NARS brush is actually a little bit unique the bristles on this are quite thick and they're slightly ribbed so it really feels as if it's grabbing your lashes 
I find this one of the easiest brushes to control. Again, it's not too large, but it's not too small. This has been in my little travel makeup bag recently, so it's had a really good workout. However, I can feel it's actually nearly finished. It's on its last legs, which brings me to value for money. This, unfortunately, only has six 0.2 mils. Nearly half that of the Dior or the Lancome in its full size. I had a friend actually be like, oh, I'm really interested in that NARS mascara. It's so cheap. It looks awesome. And I was like, mm, just be careful. How many mils does it have? And I was shocked to learn it only had 6.2 mils. NARS does this a lot and it really annoys me. A lot of their pan sizes are quite scrimpy as well. They come across as being maybe slightly more affordable than another luxury brand like Hourglass who tends to put more product in and therefore their prices are higher. But NARS often ends up being less value for money. So that's just something to note. If you're really concerned about how long a product will last, if you're not someone like me that struggles to finish makeup, if you do go through your makeup regularly, then I would recommend checking the amount of product you get. So as I said, this only has 6.2 mils in the full size. There is no mini available, or at least I can't see a mini available in the US or Australia. This retails for $24 in the US, so it's just slightly less than the Lancome, and only $35 AUD, which as I say, is a really good price to pay for a luxury or high-end mascara, but they get you with those mils. Therefore, this does work out to be the most expensive mascara when you look at how much product you get for the price out of all five that I'm reviewing today. So it's the worst value for money. Packaging, I actually gave this number one because I think the packaging on it is really, really cool. I'm not really into red things apart from red lipstick. Like Alex has this little hair scrubby thing he keeps in the shower and he decided to buy a red one. And I was like, out of all the colors, like red doesn't go. I like that they've put thought into the design of it. It's very attractive and you see it, you instantly look at it and know that it's the NARS Climax Mascara. But it's practical as well. So it's not like the Hourglass one that gets all fingerprinty. Um, it looks contemporary continuously looks good throughout its life. And lastly, I want to talk about the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, which I do only have a little size here, but I have purchased and used this for years in the large size, so I'm very much well versed in how this performs. Too Faced describes this as a very buildable formula, one that you can really build up to be like super volumizing. It doesn't give as much impact off the go as something like the Hourglass, but you can definitely build it up to be more voluminous than the Dior. The brush on the Too Faced one is the most sort of hourglass shaped. I do find the wand on this one to be quite grippy. However, I do feel like this shape sometimes means they get a bit messy on the lid. So I think this mascara works better if you're wearing like a liquid liner. It's definitely a dry formula. This one is known as a dry formula. People often talk about how it flakes. And when I was, you know, a couple of years ago, I feel like maybe the formula has changed. I never used to experience the flaking, but now I tend to get more flaking with it. Um, where like by the end of the day, I'll look and I'll have these little black smudges under my eyes where the product's actually kind of flaked off and soaked into like my concealer under there. So for me, it's definitely become more of an issue lately and I wonder if they've changed the formula or made it even drier. I know that the minis can tend to be slightly drier than the full size, but I've recently finished a full size, like only a couple of months ago. I was like waiting for the day for that to finish because it was so flaky and it kind of irritated me. So while I love how it makes my lashes look, it just doesn't really last throughout the day. I wouldn't recommend this as one to wear all day just because of its like ability to flake as it gets a little bit drier throughout the day. However, I do love the packaging of this. The full size is gorgeous. It's again got a nice sort of weighted feel to it, very similar to like the hourglass. So it feels very luxurious, but it's actually the best value for money out of the lot and the most affordable. That's why I love that they've put a lot of effort into the packaging. It feels luxurious. It's a gorgeous soft sort of pinky color like this. Very recognizable compared to other mascaras on the market, yet they can keep the price point low. So I really like that. It's, it's definitely less of a luxury priced product and more like just mid to high end sort of range. Like the Hourglass though, this is actually better value in a mini. The one I have here is actually even smaller than a mini that you can buy. This is like a freebie that came in a set, which is only 3.8 mils. They sell a five mil size as their travel size. So that's the one I'm talking about when I talk about a mini. The full size has eight mils, which is more than the NARS Climax, but less than the other three. And the full size retails for $24 in the US and $33 in Australia. However, the mini size retails for $12 US and $17 in Australia. So when we look at like price per gram, the mini sized works out as the best value for money out of all of the mascaras I'm reviewing. So now I am going to rank these from my least favorite to my most favorite, particularly taking into account my personal experience of how these felt on the lashes and also taking into account those other factors of value for money and packaging as well. In last place, I ranked the Dior Dior Show mascara. 
I felt like out of the five, it was the hardest one to get a really intense volume out of it. It definitely is a volumizing mascara, but it's very, very fluffy, very soft, nice for day to day, but difficult to get a very sort of dramatic, evening y sort of lash look with it. On top of that, it is one of the more expensive mascaras coming in at fourth place for value for money. I don't think I would go out and buy a full size of this one. I mean, I'm quite happy to use up the little samples that I get. It's a good mascara, but it wouldn't be the one that I would choose to go purchase if my mascaras ran out, for example. In fourth place, I ranked the Hourglass Climax Mascara. Now the reason this one is a little bit lower to the bottom is mainly personal preference. I'm not a huge fan of wet formulas and I find it, it it's quite difficult to control the amount of clump it can be quite hard to not get like mascara on my eyelids while I'm doing my mascara. It's a little bit harder to control. Also the packaging getting dirty, that kind of bugs me. <laughs> I found it very difficult ranking all of these because they're all really good. It's just like you've got to find fault somewhere. So for me, this one was just, the formula was perhaps a little too heavy, a little too wet. On, on top of the fact that the packaging is a little bit high maintenance, that's why I ranked that one at fourth. I feel like fourth and third were very much tied because I had to rank the Too Faced Better Than Sex in third place. Even though probably for personal preference in terms of how the mascaras perform, this would be right down the bottom just because of the flaking. As I say, I love how it looks when it goes on, but it does tend to flake and not wear as well. The reason I had to bump it up is the value for money. It's unbeatable. It came out at tops in Australia and America. Packaging on it is really cute. So that's kind of why I put it in the middle. I thought there's a lot going for it that is really great. There is some downsides. I would suggest buying a small mini size, which is better value anyway. Okay, so then we come down to the final two. We've got NARS and Lancome Monsieur Big. And in second place, I had to give it to NARS. And the reason this one didn't beat the long comb for first place is the price and how much you get. It really bugs me that this has the worst value for money out of the lot. But especially because it's such a good mascara, I love how this performs. The packaging's gorgeous. I just love everything about this. If only it came with more product inside, it would definitely have beaten Long Combs Monsieur Big, which is a big thing for me to say because this mascara has been my holy grail for so long. But I still feel like I have to give this the top spot because I do genuinely absolutely love the formula of this and it is just better value for money than the NARS. So that is my final ranking. I would love to know if you agree with with me on my thoughts behind each one. Leave a comment below letting me know what you would have ranked as number one or perhaps if you've had a completely different experience to me. I find that fascinating. Also if there's any other mascaras that you think I should try out. A few of you might be wondering why I didn't include Benefits Roller Lash in this video because it is one of my favorite mascaras of all time but that is not sort of advertised as a volumizing mascara. If you want to see more videos like this then definitely give this video a thumbs up. I have an idea for my next one. I'm quite keen to do a sort of ranking of Makeup Revolutions foundations. You know that the Fast Face Stick Foundation is one of my favorites, but I've actually recently acquired all of their foundations. I have every single foundation that Revolution sells basically in the shade F1 so I could like show you guys the comparisons of the colors because they do differ slightly between each formula talk about the formulas, talk about what ones might suit different people, and then maybe rank them based on my personal preference. Let me know if that sounds like a video you'd like to see, because I will do that. That will probably come out in three months time. No, I'm kidding. I will try and get onto that sooner. <laughs> but once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.